Welcome back to another edition of Myth Badger Videos. In this episode, we're going to revisit the graphic design tool Vector.com. And in fact, the topic today is coming directly from one of our viewers. Several months back, Grace asked, how can I do a dashed line? Now, I think this is a good question to ask because Vector does not provide a direct way to create a dashed line. We're going to have to use some of the additive and subtractive techniques we've previously talked about in order to create our own dashed line. What's really nice about this technique, and I'm sure there's other techniques than what I'm going to show you, but what I like about this is regardless of how you start this process, the technique's the same. What do I mean by that? Well, there's two ways to start this process, and it kind of depends on what you want as your final outcome. Do you want a really thin dashed line, or do you want a dashed line that you can adjust the thickness of a little bit more? So let's talk about both of the ways that you could start this. First, I'm going to come over here and grab the pen tool, and then I'm going to come and click in one spot on my canvas. I'm going to go ahead and go across, and I want a nice straight line across, and when I get to the other end, I'm going to double click in order to set that point here. But as you see, it wants to continue drawing a curved line. I don't want that, so I'm going to go ahead and hit Escape twice in order to turn off the tool so I don't accidentally add to my line. As you can see, that this is a basic, thin, dashed line. But what if I want something that's a bit thicker or larger? Well, for that, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to grab a square shape. And I'm just going to go ahead and click to create the shape first, but then what I'm going to do is extend it in either direction to make it as long as the other line. And I'm going to go ahead and reduce the height down a little bit to something that I find a little more uh, acceptable for what I want to show you. I mean, I'm going to go ahead and change this color here and make this a nice black line so you can see the difference. Which, as you can see, the second one does allow me to create a thicker line. Because this is the only difference in what I'm going to show you today, I don't really need both these lines because the technique I'm going to go through can be used on either line just as well. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this pin tool one. So let's go to my layers and get rid of that first path. And then now I'm ready to create the dashed effect. To do this, I'm going to need another shape. So I'm going to go ahead and get another square out. But I'm going to shape this, and I want to reduce the size or the height, but I don't want to reduce it too much. I want it to be bigger than my space here. And then what I want to do is I want to kind of change the width for what I'm looking to do. And let's, let's get this just a bit smaller. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to line this up, and I'm going to send this over to the edge, and it's going to snap into place on the end. And snapping is on by default, but if yours doesn't snap, take a look at this option up here in order to change that so you get just the magnet, and it just says snapping when you hover over it. I'm going to do one more thing, and I'm going to take this box, and let's change the color to a nice, easy white. And as you can see, it makes it look like part of my line has disappeared. Now we see this thin sliver right about here on the end, and I'm not too concerned about that, and you'll see why in just a bit. But now I'm going to take that white box, and I'm going to duplicate it, and I'm going to put the second one right up against the first one. This is where the trick comes in. I'm going to move that first one to the other side. I'm going to make another box and set it up against that second one, and then move this over. And as you can see, if you just repeat this process over and over, eventually you're going to get to the other side of the line. And let's see, I'm going to do one more, and I'm going to put this here. And you see how it extends past that point. So just to make this a bit longer, I'm going to select this line, drag it out, and then I'm going to find that box and put it back. I'm going to delete this center one. And then I'm going to take my line, and let me zoom in a bit. I'm going to bring that line back to the edge of that white box, okay? Now, this does kind of create a spot here in the end. So if that is something you do not desire, then I'm going to go ahead and move this over. 
and then shrink this down. And then that way, what I have is I have um, a black spot on either end, and, and it takes care of that tiny little sliver there. At this point, I'm going to go ahead and say, hey, my dash line is done. But there is one problem. If I try to drag this, notice it takes it out from underneath all those boxes. So I need to set those boxes into place and combine these into one solid object. And this is where those additive and subtractive grouping methods can come into play. I'm going to select everything here. And then I'm going to come up here to my grouping options and I'm going to use subtract. And what subtract is going to do is it's going to take all of the upper layers and subtract them from the bottommost layer. And the bottommost layer is that black line. So when I do this subtract option, it's going to remove everything as it combines them. And now I've got a line here. And you can see when I drag it, the lines are along the top. So it's showing the outer boundaries of the shape. But I have something that looks like a dashed line. One advantage of this method is that I can adjust this. If I wanted to, I could extend this down. You see it does create a shadow effect. So I'd probably want to uh, turn these uh, shadows off a little bit and, and adjust that. Um, but I can kind of control the thickness here. I can also, if I want, let's say I want to have a blue dash line, I could make a blue dash line and I could even turn around and rotate this if I need it at a particular orientation. As you can see, once you get going with this, it's very quick to make the shape, but you do have to go through a few steps to make that dash line. So Grace, I hope that answered the question for you. And for everyone out there, I hope you got something out of this. Please feel free to hit that subscribe button so you can keep up with all of our content here at Myth Badger Videos.